forgot time time zone conversion. Yeah, time time zone conversion. <laughs> Here we go. We're going live now. Okay. We live. Yep. Good. All right. Everyone, uh, welcome to the show, everyone. This is uh, the weekly explosion. Uh, where we bring MMO news, reviews, and discussions to you. I am your host, The Mosh. I am tonight uh, joined by Nebraska Dave. Welcome to the show, Dave. Hello, hello, hello. I am also, once again, as of the last two weeks, uh, once again, joined tonight by Adam Venom. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the show, everyone in the room. Uh, I don't know how many's in the room right now. Um, got a couple. We're good to go. Yeah, we've we got about five right now. As we're uh, we're a little late. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This week I'm hoping for very little uh, technical issues, but hey, you never know. My laptop seems to let me down the best times, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, yeah, so tonight, you know, we've got a good, we've got a good show tonight because uh, there's some, there's been some news that's come out. Uh, one of them is the first one. Up, uh, funny, funny enough. Uh, I'm asked the part of the show we're going to do first is the news. Um, before that, is all three of us are members of blacklisted. And if you want to know about blacklisted. Uh, Dave, do you want to give the website last time I got it wrong? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give I'm going to give them the actual uh, more front end website tonight. It's going to be uh, it's blacklistedgaming.org. Blacklistedgaming.org. That's where you should go first. We've been giving out the forum address where the forums are, but I think you, to get to get a better understanding of what the guild <coughs> is about. Go to blacklistedgaming.org. Yeah, and also there's uh, the re recent addi addition to the blacklisted website is uh, there's the Lag Spike TV uh, portal page on there now where you can actually go onto the website and in there you'll have uh, basically you can actually see the, the actual shows go live from there as well. So if you happen to be browsing the forums on, on blacklisted, all you have to do is click this one uh, bar at the top. And it would take take you straight to the show pages where I think at that at this moment I, there's arcade uh, in the arcades area on there. But um, right, yeah, there's going to be updated uh, every uh, every new show after the show. Uh, we're going to have those updated as soon as the show goes off the air. Uh, they're going to be downloaded and they're going to be put in onto the archive system. So for your all's enjoyment for later on. So yeah. Oh, and. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to thank since they're going to go through the archives, I'd like to uh, say a, a big hello to uh, Politico. <laughs> <laughs> because, because they're going to be coming by find out who's this David West fellow and what is he doing about gaming? So, yeah. well, <laughs> well, so, you know, for the archive purposes, hi Politico, how you doing? Well, <laughs> Well, for, for, for my side, uh, I'm, I could say, you know, from political side, I mean, you know, I'm a Brit. Most Brits do have a very big, big voice on politics, but <laughs> quite aggressive as well about it. But uh, I won't talk for every single Brit around you, but uh, we have our views, but they're not very well from I like. But anyway, to get away from that. Um, yeah, this is not about politics. This is not about no, politics. It's about MMOs. MMOs. But anyway, <laughs> you know, this is this is two, year 2011, and in year 2011, even people of the age of 80 play games. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so moving on, guys. Uh, we move on to the news. Um, before I actually do the first thing I was going to do, I can actually change it around a little bit. Uh, Star Trek Online. Uh, a blog was released. I don't know if you've seen it, uh, Dave, on the website, giving yeah. mm -hmm. some ideas on how the free-to-play system will work. Um, uh, I have seen some of it, yeah. And apparently some kind of Borg, uh, no, there's something going on with the Borg in there as well. Mm -hmm. Is there like new map missions or something going on? 
Yeah, they're they're tying the free to play. They've got a uh, they, they've got they're they've been busy uh, doing storylines. Uh, they had that they've added since you know the game came out. Um, they uh, they did this big nice long one about the Borg, and this uh, is another arc that come that that is a follow up on it. Is what they're they're focusing on with that. Not supposed to release at the same time. The free to play comes out, which is by the way, no. Wait a minute, that's another game. Um, I don't. Did they announce the date of the Star Trek Online free to play? I have not I, seen it yet. I did see another game that's going free to play as of tomorrow. And we need to mention that, and it's not on the list. So, but throw it out there when we get to it. <laughs> uh, but uh, I didn't see. I didn't see when they were going to go free to play with the Star Trek Online yet. Yeah, the only thing I saw was a, a, a blog. Anybody can see this if they go to the Star Trek Online, uh, the new section. There's a there's a blog in there showing giving some outlines and some ideas of what could come from the free to play model that's coming in. I think they gave an interview. To, I can't remember the um one of the guys. Gozer? Gozer, yeah. <laughs> I've met Go- Gozer. It. Uh, I, I shouldn't bring that up, but um, I, I've met Gozer before. Gozer's a really, really nice guy, and uh, he's a pretty smart cookie. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what they come up with. Yeah, you know, considering that, that you know, for me personally, Star Trek Online, I, I played it from, you know, the launch, and I did a little bit of beta, you know. I was quite, quite very much disappointed by time man, because the one thing I, I, I envisioned from the one thing I was looking forward to was actually going down to Earth. You know, going down to uh, you know, going down to Starfleet headquarters on Earth. You know, getting <laughs> missions from there. Can't do. <laughs> can't do. <laughs> you know, it, it's, like, it's like one of those big things in, in Star Trek, isn't it? You know, going down to going down to Earth. Going down to San Francisco, the Starfleet headquarters, and interacting down on ground level. You know what I mean? Which is one of the things that's still not in the game yet. You know? They, they, that was asked, by the way, at the Star Trek convention, whether or not they were going to have that, and they were going like, you yeah, don't yet, but. Everybody wants it. <laughs> yeah, that was whenever you were uh, you were actually filming that, and yeah. <laughs> I, I remember actually them sitting there saying, talking about that, like, uh, you know, it's not there yet, but it's somewhere we want to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, d- I do remember that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's on my Twitcasting account, so that's still good. Yeah. the uh, The funny thing is, is this is that uh, I, I do have an announcement by a release date of the uh, free to play. It's going to be by the end of this year. <laughs> the end of this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard too. Is at the end of well, see, first it was first quarter next year, and then they backed it to to this year. But I haven't heard. It's probably going to come out all around. You know, just guessing the nineteenth of December. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> which, my my question is this: Is that going to be a problem if they're going at the end of the month of whenever you know the the great one is supposed to release that everybody is so excited for and oh it's gonna it's gonna be the most revolutionary game ever, which we've already seen before. Uh but it's gonna be around so tours, you know, yeah. so, so Republic. Do you think it's gonna be smart for them to go free to play at that time? I think so. Because like for me, I think that game's gonna be a big flop and I, I know a lot of fanboys are gonna destroy me and shoot me for saying that, but I really think it's going to be funny when they're like, well, crap, you know, we paid all the money for this game, and it's not what we thought it was, yeah. so uh, what other sci-fi fantasy can we go out there to? Oh, there's Star Trek Online, oh. and, uh, you know, I think it was a good move at the time, because if, you know, I, I hope they don't, the old public flop, you know, flop, I think they're going to, you know, I think it was to look for Elmo's that are there at the time that we're playing. And Star Trek Online will be one of them. My biggest complaint is being with Star Trek Online. It was, it's never felt like an MMO. You know? Mm-mm. That's the biggest problem. I can remember trying to get into some fleet action. 
and it took a nightmare. It, it was literally a nightmare trying to get in there with your own feet, um, f with your own feet mates. You know, you I have to laugh because I remember everything you guys, are, everything you're talking about, much I've experienced as well. The, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, you know, I'm I'm a big Star Trek fan. I'm dressed right now in a Star Trek outfit because we had got you know costumes to be at work. And you, those that know me, know I have this outfit. Um, the, you know, I've still got it on. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a uh, Star Trek. Is, you know, I, I have a ton of friends that, that do Star Trek. You know, I've got Televixen. Uh, you know, trying to get into the Star Trek movie, and you know, I know all these people about Star Trek, just like I know a ton of people about Doctor Who. And you know, I talk to these people and. Everybody, yeah, yeah, I, I tried Star Trek Online, yeah, it wasn't for me. Hey. There was only a very small group that stayed with it, and I, I like Gozer, I like Thomas, you know, I had an interview, I made an interview with Thomas that's on my Twitch casting, uh, and I, I really am hoping that the free-to-play thing works out for them, but... Again, that's another game that is just not the standard MMO, and because of that, you're not going to have as many people last in it. Yeah, it's all it's a really niche game that you know it's it's a lot of people don't understand that like they think that they have a, to be a huge Star Trek fan to be able to play the game to understand it and be able to get into it. And I'm not the hugest Star Wars or Star Wars gosh, Star Trek fan ever. I didn't know what a triple was until uh, Dave went to Las Vegas. <laughs> had no freaking clue. And I, that that game, I mean, it, it's it needed it's you know it had bugs. It was a really buggy launch. It really was. And you know, it's got way better at space combat. And I know the E fanboys are going to swing on this. I think it's got a better at space combat than E does. Where you can actually control your, you know, your ship and be able to fly around. Yeah, I agree with that. Evasive, evasive moves and different things like that to be able to, you know, get away as, you know, point, click, destination, you know, circle around, but, you know, something or stay this many meters away from it. You know, that's just, I feel like I have more control of my ship than, oh, well, you know, I hope I did my spreadsheet right, got my Excel document out, and uh, I hope that this works the way I think it is. Got my calculator <laughs> out. Oh, we're playing to you. So I, I, I definitely I definitely say that the game in that aspect has EV in space. <laughs> I know I'm going to get destroyed on that, but no oh, well. I, well, I'll put it this way. EVE, EVE space combat is the old 19th century wooden ship combat. Yeah, where you turn, you do your broadsides, and you, you know, it's it's you throw all this firepower out there. It, you're not moving extremely fast. Then you have what I call modern ship combat, which is what Star Trek is, where you've got faster ships, you've got cruisers, you're shooting off a load and then turning and, and trying to get to your other side. It's a lot quicker movement. Then you got Star Wars, which is fighter combat, which is like you're chasing each other back and yeah. forth and trying to get into each other's back to to get your, uh, you know, to get the beat on them, to take them down, just like a, you know, modern aircraft combat. That's the difference between the three combats. That's the way I put it. But the thing with me is also that, you know, it won't would have been really ace in my opinion, would have nailed it for Star Trek, is if they give players, you know, actually, in fact, do it more often, instead of actually fighting from outside, you know, when you're in the ship, but you're viewing from outside the ship, but what if you can actually pilot the ship from actually the captain's chair? You can actually see the actual ship, you know, like as if you see him in the film, in the episodes and the movies. You see it from a captain's standpoint, and you see you know, you're actually a bridge in front of you, you got your offices are at work, and the only yeah. thing that you see outside is the actual screen that comes up. Yeah, they, they, uh, right now the the, the uh, bridge on Star Trek Online is Pimp My Bridge. Yeah, that's the only thing. Is that I, think, I think that would have been a cool thing, because 
they could have, they, they, you know, when they are not in combat, they can all, they can give you the option to go outside, you know, get a camera angle outside of the ship. But when you're going into combat, you're in the ship. Yeah. So which would have made it more, of a, you know, would appeal more, far more to the Star Trek Online fans, I would have thought. Well, I mean, one of the biggest points, uh, not to keep dwelling on this, but one of the other biggest complaints about Star Trek Online is that you couldn't play a crew member. You were the captain of the ship, period. Yes. Mm-hmm. Done. You, you couldn't play a crew member. You couldn't have a crew of player characters together. Um, except if you do go down to the ground, you can do that. But when you're up in the space, you all have your own ships. You're not all sitting on one ship running the combat. And, of course, you know, all the purists for Star Trek didn't like that. Uh, it would make a harder game to code and a harder game to play. But in, in this case, it would have been like, well, you know, you lost, they lost a lot of a lot of potential Star Trek fans yeah. get into it yeah. that way. The other thing they could have done as well is that, you know, if they are people not all being captains, if they had, say, for example, everybody starts off as a crew member, maybe, you know, if you pick an engineer, a tactical officer, you don't go straight into being a commander or lieutenant and things like that. You, be, you all start off, start off as ensigns, right? Well, see, that was the original game when Perpetual had it. That was their plan. But then again, look how far that got. That's why Star Trek got picked up by Cryptic to make the Star Trek Online. Because Perpetual went out of business because they couldn't get that. <coughs> they, you know, the way I see it, if, if they are a way you can actually not be a captain at the start, the only, I, only way I think people should be a captain is if you're a guild leader. If you're, if you're yeah, a guild leader... That, 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 that wouldn't work. You wouldn't have enough players. Yeah, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. That's why they opted against it. So. It would have been cool if they could pull that off, though. Because if they can, you know, it... Oh, it would have been great if we could have pulled it off, but they couldn't pull it off. That's the problem. Not in this today's age of MMOs. You can get away with that, you know, we, we got away with that back in the old, uh, the old text game. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, I guess what was that one? What muds? And stuff that like? was a moo. That was a moo. Yeah, the uh, like the problem is is now is people are so stuck on hearing the word massive multiplayer, and if there's not a bunch of people playing, then a lot of people get worried about the game. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, nobody's playing. What's the deal with it? So, yep. that's it. Yeah. So moving on. Uh, I'm going to leave the juggernaut to last, I think. Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, he's a Conan. Um, Conan... Can I just say Conan? <laughs> yeah, yeah Conan... We're not, talking the, we're not talking the comedian with red hair. <laughs> uh, Conan, you know, he had an interview. Uh, basically, with a player from... A player standpoint who played, you know... And basically, I can't remember what game he was, he, they said he was from, but basically they, you know, asked him, they asked him, you know, the best moments in Age of Kona, you know, from his rating experience, PvP experience, and, you know, he gave a positive review, except for the, the part that, uh, launched that he was part of. Um, what do you guys think of, you know, Funcom going out their way and actually interviewing players? Go ahead, Adam. I think it could blow up in a face. <laughs> but the thing is, is this, is that they're only going to publish something that they, is like, you know, they're not going to publish something that somebody goes, yeah, well, your game sucks. I can't stand it. And it's horrible, and this is bad, this is bad, and this yeah. is bad. So I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it's it's, it's controlled media. It's completely controlled media. Controlled so. media. I agree. I think it's a way for them to be reassured that there is somebody saying good stuff. So then they can put it out into plain, put, put their minds on these saying, hey, these guys are saying this. When in fact they didn't. Well, here, here's, here's the way I would do it. I wouldn't have done, have done it quite the way they did it. Oh, I, I don't know if you guys, well, Mosh, you probably haven't, but I'm, Adam, you may have seen the Ford commercials, the way they've been doing the recent Ford commercials? 
uh, where they have a where they have somebody do a test drive and then they bring him inside and they think they're just going to do an exit interview and it turns out it's a press conference. Oh yeah, uh, I and think I've seen that. That that sort of thing would work, I think, in, in better because you would be going in, you would have somebody, you know, it could be, you know, somebody who hasn't even played the game, let them play the game, they get a good feel of it, you know, see what they like about it and stuff like that, and then tr drop them in front of a bunch of game site reporters and say, okay, ask this guy your questions, you know. Oh, yeah. well, you know, how did you like the game? Well, you know, I liked it, you know. That, it would be more realistic than kind of the, I'm going to choose a player and we're going to make sure he says good stuff. Yeah. I actually ought to keep a camera. Like, if we're going to do that, then keep a camera on them the whole time that they're playing. <laughs> yeah. And then well, have them talk while he's playing. Like, well, kind of like what we all do. Yeah. I mean, that would work out a, a heck of a lot better. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm playing that game and it sucks, I'm going to make it known that, gosh, this is horrible combat system. Yeah. Or, gosh, this isn't working very well. Or, you know, this is... I really wish that what they would have done with that game is, like, they had the right idea with the way the, uh, you know, the swinging system is of having it where you hit the uh, the buttons to go through the different, like, if somebody's blocking on one side, you can attack them from this side. Yeah. And, like, hitting the different buttons instead of just going through and, you know, like the wow system of, you know, targeting on them and hit one, hit two, hit three, recycle again, one, two, three like, over and over and over again. The, the thing is, is if they would have went more, like, with a dark fall feel to it, of actually your aiming and swinging and things like that... Yeah, that would have been neat. That game would have blown up. But, I mean, it's good that what it does now. But in the very beginning, I, the, the thing that turned me off the most of that game was whenever it was linear. It was really... It didn't feel like it was an open world to a certain extent, it was felt like you were put into a new <laughs> arena, which we've all experienced with going in and playing, uh, if you've ever played EverQuest, and if yeah. you've ever played EverQuest 2, yeah. you feel like you're in, in an arena base, you can go in this arena, you can't explore outside of this, you can't take a, a certain route that you normally wouldn't take just because you want to. And that's, yeah. that's really what Asia Conan destroyed it for me. Well, the, the thing about Age Conan is you really had to get to about level 30, 35 before you finally got out of that area and you could jump back and forth between between zones. Yeah. And, it, I mean, it literally took you to level 35, and that's, yeah, the game <laughs> has a maximum level of 80, but it's like, oh, my God, I... I'm sick of this goddamn terrain. Yes. <laughs> you just want a new place, new scenery. You know? I want to go someplace different. This is boring the hell out of me. Yep. And until you're level 35, you really can't do that. Once you're 35, you can. You can jump around a lot more, better, easier. But it, it was just... I mean, my character's uh, still level 78 over there. I haven't gone up. But the good thing is it's free to play now, so I can play it whenever I want. Yeah, that's the thing about it. I think that that's where it's gonna that's gonna save that game is where people are going to be like, I've got a couple like four hours, five hours to play. I'm gonna play it. Okay, I'm gonna play this game for a little bit because the MMO is like everybody, they're very taxing to you because you feel like you're you're paying for it, so you have to play it, you know, and you feel bad for whenever you go and play another game, mm -hmm. and you're like, well, I'm playing this game. But, yeah, my guild needs me, this needs me, and this needs me. And I really don't have the time for it. So they just drop off you know, the face of the earth and quit playing it. So I, I think it's definitely good for them to go free to play. But, like I said, this interview of this, uh, I, like I said, it's, it's controlled media. I mean, of course, we're going to say we interview a, a player, you know, that really enjoys his age of Conan, but... Honestly, did he really enjoy it, or is he just a fanboy of it? And you might pay him. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, everything, everything I thought that uh, kind of killed the Conan from the start is that when you know all that channel stuff, you had about thirty different channels, you know, and that's where they lo lost the feel of MMO as well. It, it wasn't uh, open, you know, open terrain. It wasn't 
free flowing, you know, like in WoW, that's what makes WoW so successful, even though I, I despise the game right now, is that, you know, you can go from one zone to the other without zoning, you know, without a loading screen, you know, it's only, the only time you get a loading screen if you go from Kalantama or the Eastern Kingdom, or you go into Outland or uh, North, you know, know North End. Uh, I'm, I'm, because I played EverQuest and EverQuest 2 that the, the, uh, the zoning d didn't, uh, didn't bother me too bad. I, I, the, the problem as I saw it in, in that zoning thing is it wasn't that you could go across the zone in multiple different areas. You know, it wasn't. The, the biggest, the biggest problem I had with Conan, which is similar, but it's not what you think. I know Conan. I know the world of Conan. I know what the map looks like. The maps don't look right. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. The maps don't look right. Nor do the terrains. Where? Yeah, they don't look. They don't look natural at all. It looks like a designer made it. And you know, I know the game is designed, but you know. It has to have that feel to it, that right feel. Well, it, I mean, countries aren't even correctly placed against one another nah. in an age of Conan. They're a bunch of giant squares. You're on a you're on a square. You're on a rectangular map board with squares one next to each other, and you can go from this square to this square. That's that's all you want. That's not the map of Conan. You can find the map of Conan out there on the web. It's real easy. It, he, it's not like he didn't like draw fourteen thousand different versions of the dumb thing so you can see where everything was at. He's got the entire world drawn out and stuff that's not next to one another. You're going <laughs> like, okay, I I've read the Conan novels and I want to go to uh, Vanir. What, how come Veneer is off of that zone? It's like, you know, three-fourths of the way across the map. Why in the, uh, uh, on the regular map? It, it, that's where it really blew the reality. And yeah. that's where I feel it blew up. I think it's all down to the fact that, you know, Fungon didn't take the time with the game. They didn't really take the time. They just threw a game together, rushed to the release, it was bugged from the start, and it failed from the start, you know. And 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 that, you know, and, and, and a game like that, it was hyped. It was hyped, hyped. You know, and you see the graphics. But I gotta say though, know, for Conan, to this day, I would say Conan's graphics is still the best. You know, for graphics, well, it's, it's still the best. That's all it's got at the moment, you know. And, uh, you know, it's got end game content, you know, some good stuff in it for end game. You know, the one thing I do remember from Conan is that Black Castle uh, dungeon, when you went up that one um, stairway, and you go, like, uh, halfway up, they got this big boulder coming down. And that, that's been like an Indiana Jones style going on there. You know, and uh, that, that kind of did remind me, you know, that was quite fun. But the thing is, the, the feeling of that thing carry on through. And you got to 55, you had to grind your way then from 55 to 80. Which was annoying. They didn't take the time to add a quest. And that's what destroyed me. I, ha I have a big problem with is like with MMOs, is it, it shouldn't be me looking at my, uh, like, my experience more or anything like that, or, or checking, like, you know, my stats of, you know, how much my character has progressed. Is like the most fun that I have with MMOs is. Whenever I'm, I'm going through and I hear, like, if I level up and I didn't realize I was that close, so you're like, wow, I just leveled up. I didn't expect that at all. That's whenever MMOs are fun. Because, like, if it feels like a grind, I get burnt out really quick. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, a lot of MMOs today, you know, that they come around to make. got to remember wow. that. They make, make them a less grindy feeling. You know, there's always going to be that generic... Yeah, uh, questing system where go kill six balls, you know. But they're gonna make it fun whilst you do it. You know, give something, you know, give a taste factor to it. You know. I, I, I actually going back to our other bugaboo that we like to talk about a lot. I think actually that might be where 
Star Wars The Old Republic might actually succeed is because of that. I think I think that's kind of where they were tr- what they're trying to do in that game and of course our other one Secret World yeah. is going to be doing that too and it's not as much of the fact of I leveled it's I'm going through the story progression and I like that's where I think both of those games might actually have it right it is, is because of that Conan there's a story there but god is it hard to figure it out and it doesn't really Put you into it until way until the time you finally meet Conan. Do you finally get kind of an idea of what's going on? And I think that's where they kind of blew it. Uh, that's another area where I think they kind of blew it. Now, I, like I said, the terrain is a horrible thing for me, but the, the Conan actually has storylines in it, but they're extremely hard to follow. Yep. Yeah, but what happens when the story ends? That's the problem. Is with, you know with games that have, you know, it's the next level, it's the next level, it's the next level. That's the thing that keeps pushing you. Okay, well, then you have, if a game is more story-based, what happens when the story ends? You know what I mean? What's what's your end game? How are you going to keep people? And that's, yeah. that's the thing that I think WoW has done so well is being able to, yeah, it, I mean, they're keeping people. I mean, they, they're the most subscribed game out there, you know, pay for or it's the game that everything else is compared to, to uh, should I say, because there's probably some Korean games that are ridiculously uh, more players. But <laughs> what happens when, you know, you know these stories start running out and the gameplay starts running out? And WoW's really good about releasing new patches with new raids, new patches with new dungeons, and stuff like that. And that's, that's something that these you know companies got to realize is, yeah, you may have made an awesome game, but when there's no content there left more, you know, to consume, you lose people. People get bored. People don't want to do the same stuff over and over and over again. You know, so that's the thing, you know, and that's why I think got also killed Golden because they, you know, you know, with WoW, they're, all right, they're bringing expansions. I'm always complaining about the expansions they're bringing in, but they're also bringing in story. They always bring in something with it, which I gotta say with Blizzard, they do make some good stories. They got a good lore with, with you know with Warcraft. It's good lore there, and they can work from that. But with Conan, they got a book, they got a Conan lore, but they don't stick to it. But anyway, moving on, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic going on one from one to the other. Uh, War, a Warzone video, along with the game system page for the Warzones, have been added, uh, which you know shows how the actual Warzones will play towards the game story. The only thing is with that, the only type of PvP there is in Star Wars is the Warzones. There is no open, you know, open world PvP, which is to me. I, I I enjoyed galaxies where you uh, every once in a while you would run into somebody and be like, "Oh crap, that guy is going to kill me," or "I'm going to kill this guy." You know, that's that's. I just don't understand why they're going down this like this road with that game. It's going to kill it. It really is. It's, it's going to limit people to go into certain spots again, as usual. But I did hear something smart that they did. Instead of doing a staggered release for the U.S. and uh, you know overseas, they're actually going to be they actually <laughs> put them both together now. They're yeah, it's a the good thing. thing. Yeah, you know, it's a good thing because you know they were always in the past and spitting them out, which uh, they've always given the edge on the people. Who, hey, you know, especially when the Warcraft was winning them, is that, that when the Blue Crusade came around. You know, I can remember people just camping outside the, the park of the Welton and just waiting to go pop ocean through it. And the person who actually was lucky enough to have it for midnight, and then on, onwards, was the first one probably to hit uh, 70 at the time. You know? Now, my question um, is this. Is it going to... Now, EA is producing this game. Or, uh, not producing, but it's... Uh, distributing. Yes, yeah, distributing. Yeah. 
Now, my question is this. EA was distributing also Battlefield, right? Yeah. When Battlefield released, they said that they are up 400% higher server, uh, like, servers than they were mm-hmm. Battlefield 2, right? Mm-hmm. So, they're having all kinds of problems with, you know, issues with bandwidth, issues with all these different, you know, uh, servers not having, you know, enough servers and people complaining mm-hmm. that there's disconnects and stuff like that. <coughs> with EPA having this wonderful, uh, I guess, this wonderful team of developers and also, uh, I guess, devs and... Mm-hmm. Server guys. Yeah, server guys. Yeah. What are they going to do whenever this server... Or you know these servers get released for the old republic. Is it a big worry for everybody that there's going to be a huge, huge crash? Is it going to be a problem with the? Uh, I know they were trying to stagger out by like how you were if you pre-order the game first, you get in right, right. like that. Yeah. I, do you think it's going to be a big, big factor? I, I mean, I th- I, I, I'm seeing it right now. People were like complaining about rifts having load queues. But I see this baby cracking. I I can definitely see it from the start because, you know, the servers coming from EA, looking at the Battlefield 3 release, you know, they are disconnects and stuff. Uh, if they're coming from EA for the, the old Republic, then I can definitely see them crashing because, I hate to say, EA doesn't have really much experience providing service for an MMO company. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, you get, you're going to hate to hear the thing I'm going to say then. You know, I don't <laughs> think, I don't think they got, you know, enough cuts, you know, you know the EA are all about money, but they're not, I don't think they're going to give, you know, what the fans want, in a sense, you know, a good, stable, running game that people can play while getting disconnects. Because if they get that, they don't realize that the MMO world is not like playing FIFA. You know? That's, that's their biggest niche, I think, for EA, is FIFA. They should stick to FIFA. Not trying to come into the MMO world, because, to be honest with you, I think Bioware should have turned down the offer from EA. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's... I, I can't wait to see it. I might be eating well words with it, but I, I really... With right. EA's running about with MMOs, yeah, it's not, not, not a good line. Okay, now I'll bring up something else. Funcom is distributing Secret World in the United States with EA. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's put this in perspective. The two games that we're really looking forward to for Blacklisted, both of them are distributed by, by EA. EA. Um, so... The pow- I'm hoping, maybe, since they've got a couple months here with what they've experienced with the, the battlefield, that they'll get their butts in line and they'll figure it out and then they'll have enough and not have that problem with Star Wars. Because you know there's going to be a, a huge initial influx of people in Star Wars. Then people are going to experience it and then they're going to lose half of them. It, it's the way of MMOs, unfortunately, but... Um, I, I really think they've got. I don't know. I'm 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 wor- I, I am with the rest of you worried about EA. Now EA has had an MMO for a long period of time, Ultima Online, but it's a different kind of game and a lot less resources to use. <laughs> have you uh, have you all tried to go back to uh, Ultima? Anybody? Not any. Not, not, not really. No. I went back maybe four months ago and did my uh, 14 day trial again, and they sent me an email of check it out again, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Wow, I've never realized how the, uh, I guess the mobs in the game, how they move so glitchy. It's like they walk balls. Walk poles, walk poles. Oh, they lock on to you. Now they're <laughs> walking continuously to you. I've never realized that until recently. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I, I used to think this, like, I don't know if you build an image in your brain of games that you used to play when you were younger or what it is. It's like, yeah, I remember this game was so awesome. And then all of a sudden you go back to it and you're like, God, I played this crap. How did I do this? How did I play that? 
Yeah, and that's exactly what that was for me. So I'm really worried about EA having... A, hopefully the Bioware guys are smart enough to see the launch of Rift. Rift was pretty much... I mean, yeah, it had bugs, but it's probably the smoothest release of an MMO I've seen in a long time. And I mean a long time. Because everybody wants to say that well, it's nothing like WoW. WoW had it, like, really? Were you there in the very beginning when like, WoW launched? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. WoW, WoW yeah. launch was terrible. You can barely pay for, pay for a month. You know, and, uh, you know, Rift was an amazing launch. Now, the other thing with me, with AEA, is that I, I'm pretty sure you guys remember this game, Planet Con- Conquer, is that before it was EA, it was with a game company called Westwood. Now, Westwood were fantastic for RT- RTSs. You know, the best, the best RTS uh, series I've seen, honestly, I know a lot of StarCraft fans are going to shout at me for it, but I think Clan of Conquer, you know, coming from 95, Revolut, Revolut 2, Re- Revolution Rise the RTS genre. And EA messed that up. They went and bought it and actually destroyed the whole series. So, for me, I got a funny feeling that if EA get too much of a grip on uh, the older public, I even to an extent with a sick world, I hope they don't even in an attempt to try and bleed the actual titles dry to the point that they don't care for the players and just worry about the money. I guess that's what's become now. It's become a money game, you know, and that's what people want. And the more money, you know, and the more dumbed down the game. The more everybody will get into it, the more money they'll make. And this, you don't want to get into a situation which yeah. happened with Star Star Trek Online and Champions Online with uh, Atari. You don't want to end up in that situation. Nope. Because Atari turned them into cash cows and spent zero on marketing and zero on development. Really, when you got down to it. Yeah, and that's, you know, and I, I hope, you know, he, to be honest with you, for, for our sake, for the single world, keep their hands off. I hope they just, uh, let uh, Concom do their thing. just a distribution, but I'm really hoping that's just a distribution deal. I hope Which would mean going through the EA store and whatever. Yeah, I hope it's just, uh, I don't mind EA giving money to Funcom, you know, Funcom need money, but as long as they don't actively involve themselves, you know, then I think we'll be all right. Mm-hmm. But uh, moving on, uh, we've got Aeon. Uh, the Harvest Revel began from the 26th to bring the Halloween feeling. They have arranged witches to go around uh, uh, an Ando quest, along with uh, with the pumpkin head being never with me seen. Similar to what the last year's. Uh, Basically, event took place, but this time the pumpkin head can't, can't be seen. So, what do you think of this uh, harvest re- revel for Aeon? Just another event. <laughs> yeah, you know, I have to be the same. I, I have to say the same. The, the, the thing is, it's like City Heroes currently is having their event. And while it's having their event, I've seen the City of Heroes event for seven damn years. I've seen the WoW event for seven damn years. It's once they put one in, it's all great and fine the first time you go through it. But then you come back around the next year. Hey, look, this thing was fancy again. <laughs> That's what you got to work <laughs> I'm hoping that people understand that and stop doing that. Yeah, that's one thing that they got. You know, for now it's always the same every year. You know, they can at least change it up a bit. You know, it's that, like for example, you know, every year they have the horseman thing. Could they have something else instead of the horseman thing? You know, because then at least it has variety to the actual events. You know, I, I can understand having, you know, the events, but do they have to be actually calm copies of the last one? But, but, but then we have to have the Harvest Festival here in three weeks when it's Thanksgiving in the United States. And then about four weeks after that, we have to rescue R- Rudolph again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can understand changing the world for a little bit, but it's just like, eh, what do I get out of it? And yeah. people are hoarders of these things, and this, I, 
I, I guess if you're into that kind of stuff, that's cool and all, but I'm just not the type of person that's like, oh, wow, I, hey, guys, check this out. Ten years ago, I played this game, and here's a pumpkin from the original. Like, I don't really care that much about it. So the, the events and stuff like that, yeah. It has, I mean, everything has an event now, and my my big thing is with Aeon is the the 3.0 is coming out, and that's supposed to be revolutionary for that game. Uh, we'll see if it makes me come back to it or not. It'll be interesting to see what it does to Aeon, because, uh, you know, Aeon was another game I had a lot of problems from the start. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the thing is with that, though, is is they had uh they had the uh, uh the Asian release before they do the uh you know, the US release. So that's mm-hmm. a good thing that happens is they go they test everything out on that side, they break it on that side, oh, guess what? They've got six months to fix it before it comes to this side. So I mean uh, I'm a huge fan of that. <laughs> get, yeah. it, get it before us, but it's fixed when it comes to us. The 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 uh, thing that I've learned when when Aeon first came out, you know, everybody at work knew I was an MMO player, <coughs> and my new coworker comes up to me and says, "Oh, oh uh, female, oh, are you playing? Going to be playing Aeon?" And I said, "Well, I really didn't consider it, but but it's pretty." That was her actual <laughs> word. It's, 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 it's the Asian thing, isn't it? We're, we're pretty. But when I looked at it, you know, I, I never got into it. I was al- already engrossed in WoW at that point. So, <laughs> yeah, For me, you know, I played a lot of games when the launch is that uh, you get to level 25. You know, going from 1 to 25 was quite fun, you know, kind of similar to what you've seen, we've seen in the past, especially from WoW. Uh... Get level 25, and then the rest was grind. You know, it was oh, just the, it was awful. You know, I know a lot of Koreans love grinding. You know, but there's no excuse for that. You know, because the Ask Western folks love to quest away, or at least battle away against in PvP. You know, get experience that way, but not grinding our asses off day after day on mobs. I uh, I never like realized. See, when I first started playing Aeon the uh, the first time, it, it was like my last resort kind of MMO, and I was like, I need to play this, and it was good. I admit, I, and at the time that yeah, they were waiting for uh, 2.0, I think, to come out the uh, the the assault on the bazaar or something like that, and I think that's what it is. Yeah, but. Uh, like at the time, people were complaining about such a grind for that, and they're like, you know what? We're gonna do a, a double XP until the expansion pack launches, and I was like, awesome! So I played the hell out of it, right? So what happened was I changed my email address and the uh, like the area that I was playing in. It was like, what was it? it was some kind of ordeal where. They tried to say that I was trying to sell my account. And uh, so I was like, no, this is not, I'm not trying to sell my account. I just changed emails, and also I changed areas that I was living in, and also ISPs. And they were like, nope, you're trying to sell your account, because that was a huge game that gold farmers were trying to get into. And so I lost my account, and I'm like, you know what, screw it. I'm not going to fight with you about this account over and over and over again. I'm just going to go and get a new account. So... I was like, you know, it's not going to take me that long to level that back up again. No big deal. The freaking double XP, like, stopped. <laughs> and I have never sit there and, like, about killed myself trying to get back up to the level. I was level 37, <laughs> I think, and trying to get a character back up to level 37, even though I knew all the quests and all that stuff again, and it was so much easier for me to go back through. I've never seen such a grindy game in my life, and my God, that game is grindy. Oh, yes. You know, the funny yeah, thing was... Lineage. Oh, Lineage was in the middle of grinding, but the thing is, I expected it from Lineage, because that came, was, it came up before WoW, and I expected it from Lineage, but not for the You know, because I thought those guys 
but I learned a lesson that us Western folks don't like grinding like that. Those, hey, you know, those Koreans love it, but we don't. You know, the mentality of the Western folks is totally different. You know, and uh, you know, Halo had a fantastic. It had a fantastic. You know, I would say the perfect launch, but I would say it was better than the Wells. And, and and considering that he went in with a lot of promise, you know, I loved, uh, one thing I did I did love from it is that third faction being the NPCs. And when you go into the actual, it was the part of the earth where you go in and they're actually not just fighting each other, but you actually also have the uh, demon folks coming in being, you know, the third the third faction in, in amongst yeah. the fight. That was fun. That was good. It was wild whenever that would happen too because you would be sitting there battling, uh, you know, over a, uh, I can't, like a fortress, and all of a sudden, next thing you know is, you'd have the, uh, the dragons come to the bazaar, or whatever the hell they're called, I can't remember, uh, but you would have them come in right in the middle of the battle, and you would be like, really? We're trying to take this down, and you're coming, oh my gosh, why? Yeah. Oh, is this NBC is doing this crap right now, we don't need this. So yeah, it, it was freaking. I love that. It is awesome, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I like. I really love the. You know, the, I'm going to say it again. The Secret World Free Factions. I think it's going to make the game more exciting. It's going to add, add variety and depth, which I thought would be on. It it brought the variety and depth in. We've we've had three factions. All right, two of them were playable. The other one was an NPC. But three, I did it for me. But, uh, moving on, uh, to, um, get to, I just mentioned Secret World, Secret World, over 500,000 beta applications are being sent in. What do you think, guys? We'll see when it happens, man. I, uh, like, the people, like, wanting the beta, a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't understand that that's a beta. You are testing the game out to help the company. A lot of people see it as, oh, this is a trial. It's not a trial. It's a beta. You're trying to find bugs. You're trying to fix things. You're trying to test stuff out. And people make a, uh, a judgment on, you know, the, oh, well, the beta was horrible for this. Oh, well, yeah, but the game in-game is a lot better. I mean, my God, if I would have went off of, how the uh, the beta was for Battlefield 3, I wouldn't be playing Battlefield 3 right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. You know, it's same with WoW, really, think about it. The beta for WoW was terrible. You know, but yet, people, you know, one thing with WoW, that did it, is that it was graphically good at the time. You know, and UI was good at the time, which... You know, it captivated a lot of people, and that's why they had the problems at the launch. You know, but for beta these days, you know, the mentality of, of a beta player these days is going in and actually expecting a ready polished game, which people got to realize that a beta is there for testing. You te you stress yeah. testing. You stress. You're looking for the bugs. You're not in there to play the bugs, but you're there to actually look for them and actually report them, and a lot of them don't do it. And they got to realize that any video out there, out there at the moment on the Secret World is from beta. So there's, a, there's what, five months now between now and release? So there's five months worth of beta, five months of polishing, and five months of adding to the game. Because in there now long they've had with Frank on with, with the Secret World, and they've learned from Conan, which to be honest with you, I think Secret World is going to do it. I agree. I mean, I, I, I agree with the fact that uh, people don't understand what a beta is. There's too many people that do that. There's too many people that go into a beta and instead of reporting the exploits, write them down so they can use them when, they, when a game releases. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that kind of garbage is, is a problem. Now, when I was in the uh, Champions Online beta, 
uh, we were going along and everything was was working pretty smooth. And we kind of, we, you know, and me and my buddies were were in there, and we thought this game was going to, you know, do pretty good. And then uh, they did early release, and everything changed. Yep. And they literally switched everything out on us at the last moment because they were actually hiding what they were really doing. And it's like. Uh, okay, this game's a lot different than what I played before. <laughs> um, <laughs> and a lot of people, they, it lost a lot of people from the beta because of that. Yeah. So you gotta watch out with your betas as well, because you're not, you don't know if what you're really playing is really what you're gonna be playing. And trust me, when you're talking Secret World, knowing those developers, you're not gonna be playing what you think you're gonna be playing when you, when you're in the beta versus when you're, uh, when the game actually goes live, I'm pretty darn sure they're switching everything out on you. Yeah, and especially with, you know, how they're doing it with with the secret with, with the, the no levels of classes. There's going to be things being changed, tweaked, added, removed. So when they go into go into a uh, launch, they probably had uh, the old minds already set on a build, or had a mindset on what kind of weapons they want. You know, and they go into launch, and they say, "Oh, this thing is not there, or this weapon is not there, or this way I used to play is not in order to there." So they're gonna have to adapt. Well, okay, let's play the an example. Right now, they're telling us that the uh, Savage Coast is the beginning area for the Templars. You know, right? I mean, yeah. that's what they've been pretty much hinting at. Oh, Savage World, uh, the Savage Coast is gonna be the beginning. Of what if that's the end game for the Templars? Yeah, that would what be. if they're tricking you? Because I'll tell you, these guys are devious little suckers when it's coming to Secret World. I wouldn't put it past them for for blowing everybody's mind. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, that was the end game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you, you're going to have to at least with Secret World, you're going to have to go in there with a a grain of salt, saying, um. Uh, you know, this might not be what, you know, the Savage Coast might be the start, end up being the start area for the Dragon. You know, you're not going to know. Uh, what I think is going to happen is that, uh, I wouldn't be surprised that Funcom is actually doing so, you know, maybe giving out some info, which is kind of like uh, masking what they've really got. You know, like kind of like feeding a bone, but yet putting it away at the last minute, and then feeding us a different bone. No, and I think that uh, we could be seeing that a little bit from them. Well, the big thing is, is this: is that a lot of times in the very beginning of an MMO and uh, different games and things like that is, well, what the developer will do is so they'll, they'll you'll be possibly like five to maybe three uh, progressions back from what the final version is. But also, I've seen developers go through and put in stuff that is actually they want to test out for maybe later on like okay well what would happen if we throw this out there and it just you know let's let's throw this one armor that's the in-game armor out this early on and stuff like that so you know I, I really you know I, I like that they're doing the, the beta so soon I really do I know you know there's some people that are in the beta and things like that I, I don't really know if I want to be in the beta. I mean, I want to be in the beta for this one, but I kind of don't want to be in the beta for this one because I don't want to know the, you know, the puzzles and things like that directly. Oh, well, <coughs> this puzzle is like this. This is how it works. and kind of breaking it for myself. So. I, hope, I hope also that the puzzles that they bring in are actually hard. I want, them, I want some of them to be solid to the point that they're actually, all right, Fair enough, some players might get frustrated to the point where they're like, I can't do this puzzle, so I'm going to leave it alone. But I think that uh, it might actually, if they can actually make the game to a point that it actually inter makes the player actually want to do it, you know, even if it's hard, I think this game will actually do that, you know, bring people into it. I, I, I'm, I'm the same with you, Adam, that I kind of don't, you know, if I got a bit of invitation, even though I think I probably do, is I would say I probably won't play because I don't want to spoil it for launch. <laughs> That's the bad thing is knowing me, 
If I got that beta, I would be like, let's fire this baby up. Let's go tonight. I right, this is happening. This is this is what I'm doing. Yeah, the other thing is, well, it's not, you know, like even like if few of us of us can't like make invitations, like few of us would probably would be tempted to fire it up, right? But if like say for example, if we actually help our dog, then somebody around us mentions certain things. We might be actually egged on to actually go in because when you see this, that's in it, I'll have to have a look. <laughs> you know, it'd be kind of hard not to get like sucked in as well. <laughs> oh, I can believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really do really hope that, you know, the thing, you know, like we were saying on the last show, is that I think the old republic is going to kind of die off in the time that the secret world comes out. And when the secret world comes out, they'll pick up the 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 mess that just uh, the old republic is left. Yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I think you're still gonna have those die hard. I'm with the ship until it goes down, because they have no other, you know, nothing else to go to. So. Yeah. Yep. That's that. The thing is, is you're yeah, you'll have a drop, but you're not gonna. I I. You're not you're going to have the kind of drop that you're thinking just because of the fact that you've got the the series has too many fanboys. It's just not going to happen. The fanboys will stick with it thick and thin, and you know they're just going to stay there. And it, you know, no matter how bad it is, ooh, it's Star Wars. It's, you're not going to get past that. Yeah, a great example of that right now as well. <laughs> And, uh. Well, yeah, but that's, that's starting to chip away, but it's not. But, yeah, I mean, right now, the wild people, the wild. The, you have to look at it in the wild per, person's perspective. And I'll be honest with you, this this happened, this split our guild in, between EverQuest 1 and 2. We had a group of people that wanted to go to EverQuest 2, and I was one of them. And the other group was basically like, oh, I've spent all this time over here. Why do I want to leave? Yeah. And that's that's your thing, what you're going to have now, what you have with WoW. It's not the fact that, well, I want to try something different. Well, most people are going to wander. You, you know they're going to wander. It's the, well, why should I go over there when I've spent hours and hours and days and weeks and months and years over here working to get my character up? What's going to draw me away? Yeah. I'm you're not going to draw people away. You're going to draw some people away from WoW with Star Wars because the fanboy aspect. I, I honestly don't think you're going to do that. The secret world. The secret world is going to have to be a word of mouth situation to bring people in. It's not going to have the instant fan base like Star Wars does. And I, I got to say, though, for Star Wars, I think, though, well, that story wise, they've nailed it. I think story wise. Even though it is some fundamental flaws, I think they do need to address. I won't go into it. I'm not going to break the NDA, but there is some things that, uh, story-wise, with it, I think they is quite good. You know, from me point, I think Wild can learn from it quite a lot. But uh, talking about uh, moving on, this is a big one for us. Uh, Panda and monks. Or I just say Kung Fu Panda. This <laughs> uh, basically, basically, an interview was given to Ghost Crawler about the Panda and monks for World of Warcraft in the uh, Mr. Um, um, what do you call it, Mr. Morgan was was that called? <laughs> basically, um, <laughs> basically, uh, yeah. The you know, the first one, uh, one of them, for example, was that the racial abilities they were given for the Pandarans was uh, a bonus to cooking and eating, and they were also given them a uh, moderate bonus to red uh, rested experience to make it uh, less daunting for level, you know, for them to level up to ninety. And they were also like, for example, got a, a, mis uh, a mystical martial arts ability to paralyze opponents by touching. They pressure points, which is another thing that they, they were given. But that, the, the part that uh, kind of caught my eye, you know, apart from being for both factions, that they're saying that uh, this free, you know, the freeze 
three ways that you go down with these guys. There's one is a melee monk class, which you uh, attack with your fists, uh, your fists and your feet. The other one's a tank, which is a brewmaster, and the one before was called a windwalker. And um, basically, the third one is. Um, let me check it. It was uh, some sort of mystic. Yeah, mist. Remember what they called it? Mystic Walker, I think. With, with Windwalker, Windwalker. Yeah, Mistwalker. <laughs> there we go. We got it. Yeah. It's called Mistwalker. And basically, the Mistwalker is supposed to be the healing monk. The Blue Mass is the tank. And the Windwalker is the DPS. But apparently, that they can use. Don't see the tanking aspect of this is going to be down forever. So basically, the monk's tanking is going to be based on agility stats. So basically, they're going to be taking gear from rogues and druids. So basically, the rogues and druids are not going to be happy because there's going to be agility items coming from them. And the other part is well for the healing aspect of the monks. They are going to be taking. Uh, Lava from druids, resto druids, which is going to annoy your heck of things. And shamans. And some more shamans. Yeah. Yeah, but what what else are you going to do? You're going to have conflict with everything else, and leather makes the most sense. Yep. I, you know, I, the thing is, is that. Yeah, I, I I knew I had a feeling that it was going to come out with this all with those three aspects, so you can have a different <coughs> tank and a, and a healer. That's really what it is. It's uh, it can be any of the three classes. We can and have the aspect, and I don't know. I, it's the, I, there's a part of me that loves pandas just. Those pandas. Period. Um, there's another part of me that just because I and you know things like you know Genma from Ranma One Two. Uh, uh, you know he's my favorite character in that. So and I've I've got all the comics of PandaCon and and so you know that type of setting is good <coughs> to me, but I, I'm afraid we're going to run into the di the Death Knight again. I think we are. I think yeah, we are. Where everybody, where the panda is just going to be so much better than everything else. I think we're going to have a death knight situation where everybody's rolling a death knight for a launch. We have about five hundred different, you know, five hundred death knights running into Outland, and uh, everybody's all of a sudden an expert in death knights. You know, but we're going to have the same thing with the, uh, the monks and the pandas, but. Anything that you also mentioned for the itemization of the pandas, which I got right there, apart from the leather armor that they'll be wearing, is that the, the, they can actually use, um, for the mist walkers, they can use either uh, staves, maces, axes, and swords, but monks can't use shields, which is fair enough. Now, I'm expecting them to give monks tanking, considering that uh, in Dungeons and Dragons, they were tanking anyway. But, uh, it, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they are. Uh, I imagine first wet weapons or something that will be for the brewmasters, for the tanking. So, yeah, what do you think of that? Adam? You think? I, I just... I don't know why they go down these roads with, you know... I really think they ought to, instead of just doing one character, I think they ought to do, like, multiple races. Because, like, like you said, it's, it's the same stuff again. It's going to be the same thing. As <coughs> you're going to see a million pandas run around everywhere. You're going to see a million of the monk class run around everywhere, and just they need to have more things whenever they release. They need to have at least, you know, make it a real expansion pack. You know what I mean? Why don't they just make it a huge expansion, like five different new characters or something like that, instead of what they're doing now is Oh well, we're just gonna do you know one at a time, and but we're gonna do it really quick, you know. That's that's something I don't understand. But one pidada. 
fifty dollar, twenty to thirty dollars per supplement. That's what motivates that. That's oh, what yeah. it does, yeah. And the pretty graphics, you know, the McDonald's field appeals to the graphics, you know, it appeals to all kids. Well, the thing, yeah, that's the big thing is now they they went away from the uh, the whole, uh, you know, they had cataclysm, which was supposed to be, you know, death and new, you know, terror and all kinds of stuff going on and ripping a world apart. Now they're going to the cute and cuddly side of it again to film. Uh, this, uh, that's not yeah. my cup of tea, but yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever. Yeah, and I, you know, the other thing is as well that, you know, I do really think Blizzard should have brought in, a, all right, they brought the monk cast in, but they should have brought another one in. And maybe another race in with, with it. You know, maybe put the uh, pandas on the horde, because pandas were probably more aligned to tolerance than anybody else. And then maybe give another race to the alliance, along with two X classes. So then at least then, that if you have one class, Everybody's going to roll that class. But if you have two, people can kind of split out a little bit. Yeah. I'd, like I said, man, I'd like to see at least five. Mm. Roll <laughs> out five, and there you go. Not, not happening. You won't have that in any game. Have that hybrid. They can go from both, <laughs> make it the panda. There you go. Then go two on each. Well, I think the key thing, though, that really is kind of, kind of showing, which may end up being interesting is if we finally got a race that's both sides yeah. will that now mean will they unlock the, the each other's races for each side <laughs> I hope not I'm serious I'm really serious I can see them going that route I really can and that will be the death knell of the game yeah I think uh, uh, you know that will be the biggest death knell to the game that that they could ever do, but by doing this with the panda, I really think they're starting down that road. Or do you think it's going to be like they did with the uh, where you could remember how you could only have one character like per uh, like server? You could only have uh, one horde, you know, one alliance. Yeah. Now you can do both. And that really kind of aggravates me because it's like, you know, oh, well, Horde is so bad of doing, you know, Warsong. Uh, we need to do something else. Let's go to this side and win, win, win. Okay, well, this is going to be my winning character. Yeah. This is going to be my PvP character. This is going to be my... And I, just, I like the fact of I'm a big fan of PvP. And I think if you keep things separate, things are awesome and they, they can't make another character on the server to conflict with more crap going on so I don't know yeah they probably will they'll probably be like oh well you can be every single race on every single thing and it doesn't matter so yeah the other thing is as well that I'm, I'm, re I'm reading as well that uh, there's no auto attack with the monks which means that you know they're probably going to have to hit the, the actual uh, skills that they're given I'm um, busy, but the one thing that they caught my you know, and, and they caught my eye, and I caught the day was they said it before I actually seen it, is that they're going to be chain combos, which means that, uh, that like the same by Earth, for example, um, you know, media class with the monks different in resources the players might expect, whether they have both light and re uh, light and dark resources, the powers are different. We even tried to, to have the monk. Healing spec used a lot of punches and kicks, while monks uh, characters will care about weapons and, uh, and weapon contributes to their uh, damage and healing. You don't see w w weapons and a lot of attacks, but we use them as well. But for, from a uh, gameplay standpoint, you know, I this this seems to me that the, the you know the way they're going down with talent tree and stuff like that, they kind of kind of to me to me personally. Killing off variety, the way they're coming in with this, which I think you know what people liked about WoW. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't too linear from the launch of WoW. You know, it kind of it, it was open, it was new. You know, they had the story; it was looked good. It, it was easy to play, and right now I think they're killing variety. That's what they're doing. You know what you guys think? Hmm. 
It's it's really I don't know, that's a hard question. <laughs> Dave uh, No, I I don't think that's gonna be as much of a concern, to be honest. Yeah, well. Uh, I think I, I think one thing that I've learned over the years of Blizzard with the the exception there's been a couple exceptions, is that they they do know how to pretty much balance their stuff when it comes through. And yeah. I, I don't, I don't see that being a, as much of a, a much of an issue. The their pay, their P, uh, PVP stuff has also dropped significantly over the years. So uh, I don't know. I don't. Well, I suppose I'll take this time now to go to the chat room. I can see that there's some people in the chat room. What do you guys think of the expansion coming in? Uh, you know, do you guys think that World of Warcraft, you know, the Mr. Pond area, is going to be something? You know, I know, I know, it's cosmic, isn't it? Is are you looking forward to the expansion coming in? Do you think it's a good thing or, bad, or a bad thing with the monk class or the pandas? You know, anybody with or against it? Well, like I, I said before in a previous uh, uh, previous show, that uh, uh, to me, I, I don't see as much negatives uh, on it as a lot of people do. Again, I see the negative coming down the line when the other rate when there's Night Elf Ford and 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 Taran, you know, Alliance. That that's really where I see where things will blow up. But that's down the line. That's not really the supplement. Um, the big, the other thing is, you know, it, they're only going to have two more, su- theoretically, they're only going to have two more supplements after this, Mr. Pondaria. Well, and then they'll go to WoW 2. So, and who knows what WoW 2 is going to end up being or what the rest of WoW 2. But we will, I don't think, we're talking two more supplements, we're talking. They've been what releasing one a year, so they've got like basically two more years to go. Yeah. You think they're going to quit after a hundred? I don't. I really don't think so. I, I think they'll go to w- the WoW too. I, I don't think they will. I think they'll keep it. I really do. I think that they will keep it because they same thing with uh, EverQuest. You know, you have EverQuest one and EverQuest two, and you're going to keep that and. Well, I separate. could definitely see them doing that. Yeah, yeah, keep them separate. And you see how many expansions you have for EverQuest. My God, every time the EverQuest 2 gets an expansion, EverQuest 1 gets the expansion. The same, vice versa. I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. And but I'm, I, I'm just saying it's going to be at least, what I'm trying to get at is it's going to be at least, about two years from now will be when they release WoW 2. No, yeah. I, 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 that, because they've got the new game price <coughs> that you haven't told us jack about. Oh yeah, Titan's really gonna be ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's not post Titan like they've done with WoW, but you know if they bring Titan in where they revolutionise the MMO community once again, that'd be something to visit. I I won't put it past them to doing it again, man. Is uh, but um, you know to be honest with you, I think that uh, I'm personally for me, I'm sick of WoW. <laughs> and I, I, you know, mind you, I've always said this in the past. I will never play another WoW expansion and end up playing it. So, to, and this time, I will say I'll need. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, moving on. I, I, I've survived almost a year now since I cancelled my account. <laughs> it's getting close to my one year anniversary from when I cancelled my account. So. Hell, I've tried three times to get into that game and I cannot do it at all. I just hate the world of it, man. I cannot get into the world of it. And the pandas are pretty much like the icing on the cake is this is was the uh the goblins. The goblins kinda screwed it for me because I was like, Oh yeah, you know, goblins tinker around with stuff and then all of a sudden they have this roadster like, where you're driving down a road in this, like, 
I, I don't know. It's like you had a drag strip highway. <laughs> oh, crap, and oh, God. Silly. Oh, yeah. You win the lot. And that's then, why I didn't get, that's why I didn't pick up. You know, then they're going this cute and cuddly crap. And I, I said it from the very beginning, if they would make a Lord of the Rings, like in the world of Lord of the Rings, get away from the damn books, use the lore of the books, but yet have another, like, aspect of it, like, later yeah. on. Because there's, there's books that, like, go... Can't do later on. Huh? Can't do later on. Not in Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings books end. No, no, there's the other ones. His son's still writing. But he's writing prequels. Really? Yeah. I thought he was writing, uh, like, new things. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, gosh. Well, crap, man. Hell with it. <laughs> go, with new, go with a new storyline with it. Down the road. <laughs> and uh, make the Lord of the Rings, you know, a, a PvP, like, you know, races and stuff like that. Yeah. That would be awesome. But they have that crap in the game, and it's called Monster vs. Player, which is shitty. Yeah. But I like that kind of, you know, I like that kind of style of a game. I like kind of like a realistic MMO, if that makes any kind of sense of, like, a fantasy realistic part to it. You know well, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it does. It, it's... Well, that's why you like Dark Fall. I mean, oh, yeah, no, no, no. No. Dark Fall was a and then baby. There, you know, uh, there was a uh, oh god, what, what was the one that you, the other one that you were that I never played? Uh, Dark Age of Camelot. Oh um, yeah, that's my idea. You know, those kind of games I know you guys like. I mean, I don't. So, but uh, that's just a personal thing. But I see where you're getting your point is. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings. What you would have to do with Lord of the Rings is that you would have to put the uh, you would have to put it before the Hobbit book. Yeah. And, which is I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. That actually might might be a good thing it's to do that sort of thing where the where the dwarves hate the elves and the elves and the dwarves hate the humans and the halflings are are basically ignored and the orcs and the troll you know are all fighting each other as well and you know that you know the battle of the five armies you know all five of them against one another. <laughs> That's where you want. That's where, if you want to Lord of the Rings, that's where you would be at. With Wow, considering the fact that what they, where they stole the stuff from in the first place, Warhammer. Wow, which is Warhammer, uh, the, the RPG. Uh, you know, if they did an actual Warhammer, if Warhammer RPG would have been Wow in the Warhammer world. You would have had what you wanted. Yeah, that didn't happen, and that and that you know, I can't see that sort of thing occurring because of what we know, because of the leaks out of beta for uh, Tor. You're not going to end up with that until, honestly, once again, Secret World. Yeah. Well, uh, the the wild thing is, have you all seen the uh, the new previews for the new uh, Warhammer? Has yeah, is that the one? Is that the one? I'm hoping they'll do Warhammer 40k now that they put out Space Marine. Yeah. Oh, they are. They are. They're doing it. And it's called the uh, Black. Uh, not Black. It's uh, Dark. Dark. What? Uh, what is that called? Dark Heresy. No, it's something else, and I can't remember the name of it. But it, it's it's coming out where they're uh, they're actually making the uh, the 40k world. Okay, when they do the 40k world, you might have a chance at that. Because that would be, I, you know, I I would be willing to try that because I'm I, I'm a fan of the 40k world. But they got to do it better than what they did with the Warhammer world. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's way the look of it that I've seen so far. It's it's way better, way better. Yeah. But is um you know basically any so basically moving on. Uh, any any more news you guys want to bring up, Dave? Uh, did you yeah, say I'll something? bring I'll bring up the thing that goes DC Universe Online goes uh, live in uh, goes uh, free to play in approximately four hours. Which. I'm gonna say I did enjoy that game. I did. did no, enjoy. I didn't either. It was a good launch, though. I have to say that it was a very smooth launch. But 
the problem is, is that game got me. It, that game caused me to rage so bad. When you get up to the high end, that game caused me to rage so bad. It's ridiculous, and it is a very linear storyline. Extremely linear. You oh, have yeah. to really go out of your way to try to do missions for the other guys that are not your mentor. Yeah, which is ridiculous. I want to play the game how I want to play the game. <laughs> yeah. But if you're sitting in Gotham and you're working for Batman, you, you have to know the tricks to get over to a point where you can actually get missions for from Wonder Woman or get missions from Superman. And it, it's too hard to do that. You should be able to get missions from any one of the three. You should be able to get missions from other people other than those three. I'll be yeah. honest with you, the whole story does not intrigue me at all. I don't care about this alien. I canceled, I canceled the comic book. Yeah, I just I can't get into it. It sucks. So, for, like I said, it goes back to the WoW stuff. If I can get into the world and I can get into the lore of it, then I'm okay. I'm set. I'm into it. Uh, I can't get into this at all. No, I can't either. It's it's it, it's uh, that was the problem I had with it. I mean, yeah, okay, it's cool. I get to fight Poison Ivy or I get to fight Solomon. Okay, why am I fighting Solomon Grundy this damn early in the game? Yeah. Uh, and why why am I fighting Bizarro? At level 15. Mind you, he's, he's, he's kind of a, one hell of a mob to fight at level 15, but I'm fighting him at level 15. Bizarro. Bizarro is level of Superman. Superman is level four, 30. What the heck? Why am, you know, maybe 28, 29 I should be fighting Bizarro. Yeah. It, 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 there were things like that that were just like, okay, I understand helping the Teen Titans. Yeah, the Teen Titans are kind of the low end guys. I can understand that one. But uh, the, the villains didn't make sense. <coughs> I'm fighting Dr. Fate the f in the beginning mission for Cersei. What? What the hell are you doing here? Yeah. And, and uh, I'm being helped by Felix Faust. Felix Faust can't even hold a candle. To the Dr. Fate never has been able to. What, what is <laughs> this? I know, I've, I've, I've always wondered. Oh uh, I know DC too damn much. I think that's the problem with, uh, you know, with DC Universe Online, is that I, know, I don't think they've ever really got their story straight with any of them. I think what they should have done is that with the questing system, they should have not send you from place to place. You know, going from Gotham down to the metro Metropolis. I think if you're questing with Superman, you do a good bunch of li line of quests with Superman. And you do them in Metropolis. No, oh, no, you do. You do, but you don't, that bad being the exception, the, the problem is, is that with Superman, okay, because I have one, I, when I did this, I did one character for every mentor, just to see what was going to happen. Well, what ends up happening is, is they don't do the quests, so you have to go and search out the other two guys, so you end up doing all the same quests for everybody. Except yeah. for the initial, except for the initial sh first part, then now mind you, at the end game it changes, but in the end game you there's no choice. You have to grow. You cannot yeah. solo any of the end game content at all. Which you know it reminds me. You know, remember that we're doing the card and creation part where you, where you can select, you know, the one you want to choose, Batman. Uh, mm -hmm. or Superman, or what was the other one? Um, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. You know, I would think what they should have done is kind of treat that in the sense of uh, the races, like we have in have a, whereas, you know, like for example, if you start off, if you pick on dead, you start in Ender City. Well, why don't they do it as if I pick Superman, I do the quest line of Superman, I don't do Batman. But that's what I'm saying, there isn't a... The, Realize, I've got two characters up to 30 in this game before I quit. The, the, to get there, you have to do the other guys' quests. You cannot do it by just following Superman's line. There isn't enough experience. That's where I'm saying there's a problem. The, 
So you end up doing all of Batman and Wonder Woman's and Superman's to get to level 30. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that six damn times. What DC tried to do and tried to set up is exactly what Star Wars is set up to do. Yeah, I know the Star and, very and much. The problem is, is they failed at it because of the way they did not ex plan out the experience correctly. And DC is not like Marvel in the fact that Marvel has villains that that they invent on the spur of the moment all the time. DC does not create as many villains. Therefore, you, you're lim you're, you've got a little bit limited set of what you can do. Everybody knows pretty much Batman's set. You know, everybody knows Batman's villains. Well... Everybody knows Superman's villains. So where does Gorilla Grodd fit in? He's in Superman's line for some damn reason. Yeah, see, I can't get into the lore of that. I'm not a DC fan at all. Like, I, I am to a certain extent, but not really. I mean, Superman was not one of my favorite characters. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, none of the three are my favorite characters. My favorite characters were characters like Zatanna and... Uh, uh, Green Lantern. Yeah. And, you know, they did come up with the Green Lantern supplement, but you still don't, you still can't select Hal Jordan or Sinestro as my, as the, as my mentor. And I really think they pushed in the Green Lantern because the movie came out. And that was, right. yeah. that was the only reason they pushed it. Yep. <coughs> you know, I like, like the, I, I, I don't understand the logic of the game. It, it is too much kill ten mobs. Too well. much of that, and uh, I don't think, you know, what they should have done, it felt it more like a DC, not just a comic book, but make it feel more like, you know, you are a hero. You know, the problem is that you too much try to suck up to Batman, but I think that what made such a hero is great, that you did feel like a hero, you know. Well, I, I got a, uh, I got a solution to all of it. Really, is uh, they got a game right now called City of Heroes. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> yeah. Go download that. It's free to play. Bam. That's all you need. City of Heroes is where is that? You know, you got Champions Online. There's another one tried to do it. Failed. Yeah. Champions Online's not bad. I'm not going to say it's it's horrible. It's, yeah, it's, it's not, not bad. bad. It's it's. It, it, but uh, City of Heroes is, is my game. Yeah, it's really it's sad. Sad. You know, you know what I love them to do if, if is remake it graphically, bring it up to date graphically. Everything else they can keep, but graphically update it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, wide right. It, uh, City of Heroes and City of Villains is the one game now, and it is free to play. Yeah, free to play. Uh, I think you've got to pay for City of Rogues, I think. Yeah, if you if you want to, to have the ability to switch your character back and forth between good and evil, <coughs> uh, you, need, you would have to pay. Or if you want to play in the third world, which is the mirror universe of the Paradig Paragon City, you will have to pay... You you would have to pay to, for that if you wanted to play in there, but that's the regular game. Good, you know, is City Heroes or villains are the same. Otherwise, yeah. Well, moving on now. Uh, we're moving on to the uh, MMO round table. This is the part of the show, guys, that we take a it's MMO more like a triangle. Yeah, all right. More like a triangle for us guys. <laughs> this is only three of us here. It's a it's a triangle table, uh, and basically we we take a MMO title guys. We pick one out, we dissect it, we find the goods and the bads to it. You know, we we literally go all out our hands to find out find out. You know, is it really a game for you to buy, not to buy? Or is it something, you know, maybe give it a try. But yet, it's not going to last. And, uh, you know, last week, 
uh, we did uh, City Wheelers. And mm -hmm. uh, tonight, I think, Adam's probably looking forward to this one. Maybe the four both. Just a little bit. I don't know. Did you ever play this one, Dave? I don't know. What is it? Don't tell you. What is it? Zygon. Oh. I never played it. Can't say I played it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well. This is, you know, the, this is the part where also, um, the community can join in on, you know, what we discuss. So basically, what we discuss, you guys, you can have your say. We will respond as well. Uh, basically, tonight, I, I, I said today, is Xion. I don't know how many people in the chat have played Xion. I know my, myself and Adam have. Um, Adam, how long did you play Xion? I quit playing about two months ago, but there's been a lot of things implemented in. Uh, I'm checking right now and actually see if they... The rumor it had that there was... Uh, they finally put the zombies in there, which is... So, I don't know. Basically what Zion is, is think of... The world's been destroyed, pretty much. That's what it is. It's like, you know, 2012 came along and wiped out, and there was some kind of disaster that happened, and the world's been wiped out completely. There is no... <coughs> you don't have, you know, skyscrapers, you don't have buildings yeah. or anything like that. That's actually what you're trapped in. I think it's... Uh, oh, I want to say what lake it is. I can't remember what lake it is. Lake Tahoe. You're actually at Lake Tahoe, and the mountains and everything around is pretty much trapped you in from this green mist fog. And the green mist fog is poisonous. It'll kill you. So what you're doing is you're basically trying to survive. You have to keep your character yeah. alive. You, uh, you eat, drink, and build stuff like shelters and things like that. You don't have, you just have basic tools. Like you have a, uh, a shovel. If you're, uh, if you pick, like, you can go through and set up your kind of, like, what your character wants to be like. And uh, so you have an axe, a shovel, a pickaxe, or something like that. Or, you know, with uh, a needle for, like, you know, weaving stuff. Um, you go and you collect grass. Your grass, you can uh, go through, break it down into, like, a string and then you take other grass and put it together with the string and you can make baskets that way you hold stuff in your baskets like you know fish and food and things like that and so basically you it, it's a really cool crafting system yeah, of how you go through and you craft these certain items and stuff like that uh the problem with the game is in the very beginning and like it, it's in alpha still pretty much they call it the prelude uh, I mean, it was it's already went through beta a little bit, but it's it's still kind of like alpha stage, I guess you could yeah. say. Even though there was a beta for it, but I'm I'm just saying that this game is pre its actual. I, I think of Minecraft the way Minecraft is. People play Minecraft like crazy right now. They would go ahead and say that it's a full game, but yet it's still in beta. It's in this game. is a what they call a prelude is it's before the game is actually like the full fledged game is produced. But uh basically your goal is to build a civilization and you know, get together with people and your clan is called a tribe. So your clan uh you know, you go together and you kinda like, Oh well, this guy has a shovel and he has terraforming, which is being able to take the earth up and down yeah. and dig into it. To change the landscape, basically. Yeah, so he has a high level in that. I have a high level in basket making. We come together and we're like, hey, you know, if we can trade it off, you know, well, how about you do this? How about you build me a little fort or a base or something like that, and I'll, I'll give you baskets and things like that. So it's, it's really cool. There isn't any economy in the game at all. People are setting up their own economy. There is money in the game, but it's kind of like a waste. Yeah, you gotta find it this you know, by foraging. And yeah. uh, you know, I can remember when I came into the game. You know, the one thing that stuck out to me that um, 
Now, I, can't, I walked into this area, and the first thing I saw in the text message was saying that uh, I walked into some tribe's territory. You know? And the last thing I saw of that was a death pool. And I, I knew I had to walk into a city for that. But this time, it was actually not a medieval setting. It was actually a post-apocalyptic setting. You know? And, I, and, and, and the first thing I saw from the top of this hill was tents. A big wall surrounding the tents and a big trench going right in front. I was wondering what they were doing with it. And I find out then that, that there's some dude runs over to the river, digs out the actual dirt patch that was in the river, and the water just comes flat and flowing through. And I was and I found that really impressive from an MMO. You know, you can do this kind of thing with an with an MMO. You know, you can never see that kind of thing in well or any of an MMO where you can actually you change. Actually, you, you can actually change the landscape. Yeah, where you actually affect the world itself, and it's really cool. Like you know, even though you know, it's it's kind of like one of those. It's an MMO if people leave and stuff like that, or they stay and all this other stuff and move and migrate and stuff like that. Their stuff still stays there. <coughs> if somebody made like you know, build up this big huge wall and they were going to build something here and there was baskets here and all that other stuff, you know, it, it, it's pretty wild because the stuff kind of still stays there and you're like, oh, wow, there was actually a, uh, a civilization here. Uh, I wonder where they're at yeah. now or if they're still here. And it's a post-apocalyptic yeah, world. So it's kind of like if there's not a bunch of players around, you're okay with it because you're like, oh, well, you know, maybe there's not people in this area that I'm in right now. So it kind of goes with the lore, you know, and maybe people have, you know, died off or something like that. So it, it, it's really cool. The uh, Like I said, I was checking before to see if they have uh, implemented anything new into it. Uh, the only thing new that they've uh, put into lately is they made ramps where you can actually make a ramp. You have carts now that you can actually uh, take stuff and put it into a cart and like, pull the cart along. Oh, that's uh, pretty that's, neat. Yeah, that that was a big bitch that I had a long time ago about, you know, you couldn't really do much with that. And they have floors, they have ramps, they have, uh, like, trees in the mist, the green mist. They grow. They were having problems with them, like, growing because there wasn't anybody to they'd go out there and cut them down and stuff like that. So they, they kind of fixed that. Uh also, another big thing is is that now they have the infected uh, animals. Whenever they go into the green mist, they come back as a mutant. So, uh, <laughs> and the same thing with the uh, uh, like zombies. Zombies will actually come out of the mist and you and have to I, I attack the organization. Yeah, yourself. This is pretty cool because you think about it. There's going to be you know there is PvP as well. Uh, you know there is tribe versus tribe thing going on, and you can literally take the civilization from them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can pretty much go and go up to somebody and kill them and take all their stuff. You know, so yeah. it, 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 it's, it's pretty wild. It's absolutely wild. You know, I, I can remember, um, you know, like I said, coming down from my hill, coming down, uh, and the first thing I saw was this dude, as he was, you know, letting, letting the water flow through, I, you know, and all of a sudden this dude comes out from the tent. And he looks up me thinking, I'm looking down, and I'm, he's, he's looking at me thinking, uh, should I join these guys? Just, you know, make sure that I, say, I've only just started this game. And he goes, hey, do you want to join? He goes, yeah, sure, I join. Then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I'm learning fishing. I'm learning um, foraging, cutting down wood, you know, trees, getting all the twigs and the branches. You know, make, getting all the wood together so we can build walls at... Uh, they see uh, tents, you know, and the thing is, see, everything you do in the game, you got, you literally got to eat, you know, and how you eat is getting your, you know, you get your fish in, you got to build the baskets as well, to put the fishes in, you know, you got to build the, the fishing rods, and, you know, and you literally got to go to, like, these car piles, to actually get, um, you know, different types of materials, like, for example, you know, like, certain metals, which is great, you know, it's fantastic what they've done with it. You know, i, I got to say, you know, the, the indie animal uh, game makers are really good at what they're doing. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. What about you, Dave? Did you ever see it? Did you ever look at it? No, I can't say I have, but uh, it sounds like something I would be kind of interested in, really, though, because I, I, I'm kind of into that kind of build-it-up kind of mode thing. Uh, you know, I've, I've done the Minecraft stuff, and, and although it's cute, it's it's not the... You know, there's it, it, it's blocky and silly and... Yeah. They've definitely, uh, uh, one thing I will say is with this game is they've definitely improved on the, uh, the combat system. The combat system was a joke in the very beginning. It was absolutely horrible. Uh, your right hand left mouse button was, your right <coughs> mouse button was for your right hand, left mouse button for, was for your left hand, arms and stuff like that is, that's how you, sw you like swung your, uh, weapon around and dodging and things like that, which is really cool. It's, it's, it's not a, uh, a tab over and attack somebody it's actually you have to point at them and, and hit them and stuff like that so it, it's really cool in that aspect but the problem was is there, the reason why I kind of quit was there was no content to it to be a way you okay well I built myself a house okay I've learned these skills I've learned how to produce armor now what do I do what do I do with it I'm oh. attacking the neighbor's tribe yeah. Well, what happens if it, the tribes in the area politically were friends? Yeah. You know, so... Also, was, like, the, the animals. The animals were a big problem. Did you find that out, Lofty, that it was hard to find the animals? Yeah, they, I remember there was a bug on the server that, uh, well, I know there's a bug that the mob, that the actual animals were actually moving to the green mists. So, basically, that you're trying to find them, you have to go literally towards the green mists. And they will actually go into the Grievous because the Grievous wasn't affecting them, which means the only way you can get them is by going into the Grievous, which means no one was getting animals. Yeah, it was, it was getting to be a big pain that, that nobody could find, you know, animal skulls or animal bones to be able to create armor and things like that. And yeah, it, it was it was getting to the point where you're like, ah, oh, well, really, what do I do with this game? There's no quest. The one thing, cool thing, though, is that they, they have totem, like a totem pole where you can go up to the totem pole and you can make your own custom quest. And you can say, hey, look, I need six of these, and if you get that, you'll get the reward of this. And you could give, like, you know, a piece of armor if you wanted to, or, you know, a piece of yarn or something, you know, somebody would need, or, like, you know, bones and things. And it was really cool because it was like, somebody could come in, you weren't even there, and you could be like, okay, Oh, look at this totem that says this person needs, you know, six uh, deer skulls. Okay, well, I'll go out and kill, you know, six deer, get their skulls, come back, and they have this piece of armor that I need. So yeah. I'll go ahead and just complete that quest for them. And it was really cool with that. But, like I said, the big thing was is there wasn't a lot of warfare going on at the time and things like that. There wasn't a lot of people fighting each other for land and things. Uh, yeah. That's something later on is the conquest stuff. So, it's it, it's it's a cool game. Uh, definitely try it out. It's uh, I don't know how much it is directly. I can't remember the price of it now. Uh, I, I think it was ten dollars. I think it was. I'll, uh, I'll check that as we. Uh, you know the the one thing that you know caught my eye, you know, being a Dark Four player, you know the thing for Dark Four for me was the uh, politics. The way you, you, in Dark Four it actually immersed players, even though that some players didn't like politics, were getting involved. They didn't realize that they were playing in, in the political world. You know, everything that you were doing with your clan was, was impacting the world. But in Exile, I was hoping for the same thing. But this time, instead of actually having cities that were built for you, you were building the cities. So every single structure, every single ditch every single wall was built by the clan mm. which to me it caught my eye uh it's 40 bucks it's 40 bucks 40 bucks you get one month free and it's uh 15 bucks a month after that that's not bad is it well probably that's more than I well, wasn't it I think more was about, I was about 10 I think isn't it no no that's about the same cost. 
Yep. I forgot that. Uh, well, well, it's fourteen ninety-nine. So. Yeah, it's the same telephone that's that uh, for. Yeah. You telling me that you Americans gotta pay more for wire months? Yes, believe it or not, because the reason why is is our uh, <laughs> our trading basically is you all have a better economy than we do. So wonderful stuff. I well, I know for example that when I used to pay low, all I had to do was pay nine pound nine nine, which was basically rounded up ten huh? ten pounds. Cover me for a month of all. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's it's a lot. We like I said, we're our economy is kind of crappy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always been that though. I mean, it's been there for seven years. That's not the the uh, thing is. The thing is, I hate to bring it up because it brings in politics, but it's the fact that we've got this money and we got more taxes on it. Yeah. And then there's me thinking that the UK is toxic to smooth reasons, but uh, and I always remember then that the, the dollar's got not virtually worthless in the world, now, isn't it? No, I wouldn't say that, but it isn't great. The oh, uh, that is past the euro. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> the uh, the situation it. Wow, and EverQuest set the standard of fifteen bucks a maybe fifteen bucks a month, and that's what we're stuck with over here. Any MMO that comes out is fifteen bucks a month yeah. if they charge per month. Secret World's going to be that. Uh, Star Wars: The Old going to be that. It, it, it's it, you know any anything new that fifteen bucks a month is like the god number, and that's what everybody charges, even if it's not worth that. If you're less, if you don't charge fifteen bucks a month, you may as well go free to play because it's it's uh, you actually get more money that way. Yeah, and to be honest, with you, I think personally for Exion, I think for them it would benefit them to go free to play as well. Well, Maybe. I I would probably give it a, I probably would give it a try if it was if it wasn't fifteen bucks a month if it was a. Uh, Free to play. I would. I would. I might give it a try. Uh, right now, I can't afford it, and it's not. It doesn't. Uh, you know the the situation as you guys are describing. It, it, it doesn't uh, appeal enough to me to make that investment. I don't think really any of them are right yeah, now. Yeah, right now. I. Uh, you know, this is with me. The problem with me is that I always see. I got kind of stop this way of thinking. That free to play is kind of like saying, play me when you can. But whereas with pay to play, is you've invested, so play. You know? That's the way well, I kind I mean, of. Adam, Adam expressed that earlier, the exact same philosophy, and you know, everybody's kind of that way too. I mean, that's the thing. What did I do? I, ha I dropped, well, then picked up Rift. I then dropped Rift, picked up Star Trek Online because of the convention. I then dropped Star Trek Online, re-picked up City of Heroes. Now, I have not dropped City of Heroes. But in the meantime there, I had a second game that I was paying for, uh, Lord of the Rings. Well, I stopped paying for Lord of the Rings. So, I mean, I got it. I basically can pay for two MMOs. That's the way I look at it. Is just affordability wise, I can pay for two MMOs. I'm not going to pay for something that I'm not going to enjoy playing. For one, or that I'm going to get frustrated with, which is why DC Universe Online went out out the window. And the I'm only going to. So I have to look. What is the best value for my money? Is what I'm looking at. It's a little bit different perspective. Yeah, it, it, because I'm always going to be paying for two. That's the way I I, I do things. <laughs> I'm always paying for two, and the reason I got into that mentality, be, by the way, is because I, for the longest period of time, I had two City of Hero accounts and I had two WoW accounts when I was playing WoW. So I'm used to my budget is budgeted for two games. This game is not 
Atari, but this game, Zion, is not going to be one of those games that's going to break into that two. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it comes down to it is everybody usually has at least, you know, I mean, hell, at one time I was playing yeah, Pain for four MMOs, <laughs> which was not going to happen ever again. I, I was playing uh, Earthrise, I was playing Zion, I was playing uh, Darkfall, and I was playing Eve all at the <laughs> same time. And that will never happen again. Which one of those did you play the longest for? Uh, the longest I played was between... Uh, Darkfall was the longest I played. Uh, the one that I tried to hardcore get into was Eve, and Eve is just not my type of game. Yeah, uh, it's one of those games that uh, you like or dislike. <laughs> yeah, uh, Zion was probably the second longest that I played all those four. Is because it was it was kind of neat because there was constantly having updates and stuff like that and new things were constantly being yeah. added. In. Yeah. Uh, but like. Uh, Earthrise was a buggy piece of crap. It was a horrible launch, and yeah, it, apparently they fixed a lot of it, but I haven't seen anything yet. So, yeah, well, see, like for me, right now, I, I've got, I'm running AG Conan because it's free. Yeah. I've got, uh, you know, I've got a couple of the Perfect World games. You know, I've got Lifetime already on Champions, so <clears throat> I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, I've got uh, City of Heroes, which I actually am paying for VIP on. Uh, Star Trek Online is still sitting on my computer. It's not being paid for anymore, but I'm waiting for the free-to-play. So uh, that'll be in my pile of free-to-plays. Uh, I've still got my uh, the uh, Star Wars Galaxies emulator site that I'm playing for, that I don't pay for, that, but it's free-to-play, and i am still got it around. The thing is, with free to plays, I tend to hang on to the games a lot more, and I'll go back to them, play them for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, then go out. Um, I've got, I'm looking at my my desktop right now. I've got Clone Wars on there still, um, you know. So, but I I don't have Rift anymore. I don't have DC anymore. I don't have you know all the other games. I I used to be in Eve. I don't have that anymore. So. It, it, it's again. I, I can pay for two games. It's which games are going to give me the biggest bang for the buck, and which ones am I going to hang around playing all the time? You know that I'm going to want to go back to a lot. Well, it's right now. It's Core City Heroes, and then you know I've got the second game slot opened up for yeah. more. And when April comes, see whether or not I drop the tour. Or I just stopped playing for the City Heroes VIP. <laughs> Which, you know, to be honest, I should be playing City Heroes more than I should, should be. Yes, you know, right? I should be, but uh, right, right now, Battlefield 3 is uh, so sucking up so my time. <laughs> so should so should Timmy and Kaylee and Jade and um, Adam. <laughs> uh, you know, I've got uh, this... This little game right now. Yeah, I know. You guys got oh. this little game called Battlefield 3 right now. I <laughs> it's called Battlefield And you know what the sad thing is? It's next week I've got Skyrim. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. there you go. Yeah. So, basically, you know, for, for I suppose this will probably be the only question for me and Adam. Uh, Adam, would you say to the people of the chat, would you say, Xion, a Vi, uh, not worth it, or would you say, I don't know if there's a trial yet for it, but uh, would you say you probably go for a trial and have a look? Uh, there isn't a trial for it, but I would say look into it. If it looks something like you would like, then uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, heck, why not play it for, you know, a little yeah. bit. Uh, they're always constantly adding stuff onto it. I just quit playing because I, uh, like I said, I have way too much. I don't have enough time <laughs> right now to do anything. Uh, if it's if it's lag spike, I'm doing it. If it's uh, Battlefield Three, I'm playing the hell of it. Uh, and uh, you know, it's I, I would say wait probably wait until you know they start adding some more features in there. The problem is with that though is they might raise the price of the game. Not any problem. Yeah. So, but eh, why not? You know, how with it? Check it out if you want to check it out. Uh, don't watch any videos online of it. 
they're not accurate at all. They're, you're going to see some old combat and crap like that. Oh, yeah, there's going to be some... Cause, you know, considering that they, they do release content pretty regular. Oh, yeah, all but, the time. But, uh, you know, the best of Foxy... If there's a live scene out there of Foxy somebody showing a live uh, capture of Zion trying to find those, and then at least then you're going to have an up-to-date version. You know, for me, Xion, it, I wouldn't say might, it's like Minecraft, but I would say it's like, um, I'm trying to think what Xion is similar to.